According to Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, for the Vikings, all options are on the table when it comes to Dalvin Cook, including a release if things don't get worked out. And I'm assuming that's if a trade doesn't happen. But something's got to give here. Cook, he's scheduled to have a $14 million cap hit. And for Minnesota, you create more breathing room for yourself cap-wise. Trading him, you save $8 million in cap versus an outright release, you save just $6 million. And at this point in free agency, the umpteenth wave, creating cap is pointless. The best free agent available right now for the Vikings is Leonard Floyd. However, with just $1.4 million available, where creating cap is a big deal, is in signing your draft picks. Dalvin Cook, he's the next clear cap casualty to make that happen. And I think the fact that this has dragged on so long without any sort of trade going down, at this point, if you're a team that's interested in Cook, you're better off waiting for him to get cut. You know it's going to happen and keep your draft picks at the same time. And even if you can't sign him, let's say you're Cincinnati. We're talking about a running back here. If you can't sign him, you're Cincinnati, he ends up signing in Buffalo. Well, you have the draft to look forward to where you can find the starter in the fifth, sixth, or seventh rounds. But for the Vikings, after the re-signing of Alexander Madison, to me, that signaled the end of the Dalvin Cook era. And during last week's press conference, GM Kwesi Adafo Mensa, when asked about Dalvin Cook, he kept it super vague, saying, quote, Again, conversations are always ongoing with him. We're trying to be solutions-oriented and always trying to put the roster together within our constraints. And as Cam has been non-committal on Cook, Cook's agent, Zach Hiller, went in on the verbal tug of war. He was recently on the Caps Off podcast where he said, my clients put up Hall of Fame numbers, which I don't agree with that, but whatever. My clients put up Hall of Fame numbers, but he's been in Minnesota where they've been mediocre and he's played on one shoulder. And if you also remember, Hiller previously criticized Kevin O'Connell's play calling on Instagram. Now, if you're a Vikings fan, you're probably annoyed with Hiller. And if so, I recommend not wasting your energy. He's trying to get his client out of Minnesota. And for the sake of signing their own draft picks, I share that same desire. But also, I get it. With the former head coach who was extra committed to the run game, run, run, pass, defense, 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 it was all sweet back then. Now, with the new head coach, the run game is taking a back seat. Suddenly, we have a problem now. Vikings had the six fewest rush attempts last year. This is the business side of pro sports. It's not pretty, but I get it. It will get something official, I'm sure, within the next week or so. Draft night is less than two weeks away. And speaking of draft night... A little mock draft action. The theme today, best player available. And as a representative of team trade back, going to keep it business as usual. Best player available, doesn't matter the position that they play. We'll figure it out later. Traded back with the Philadelphia Eagles for picks 30 and 62. With the 30th pick in this 2023 mock draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Brian Branch, safety out of Alabama. Spends a year in the bullpen while Harrison Smith and Lewisine go off. In 2024, Hitman and Vikings, they go their separate ways, leading to the first year of the Lewisine and Brian Branch takeover. At pick 62, Siaka Ika, defensive tackle out of Baylor. An absolute force up front. At times, it's tough for even two blockers to stop him. At pick 87, Joe Tipman. I'll get to him right after I talk about pick 119. Henry Toa Toa, linebacker from Alabama. Incredibly disciplined, and it's even more apparent versus the spread offense in space, closes in on the ball carrier. I like DeMarvian Overshone more from Texas, but he was gone at pick 119. Best player available, give me Henry Toa Toa. Now, getting back to Joe Tipman, not to toot my own horn here, but I really like how this worked out. At pick 158, Andrew Voorhees. With the re-signing of Garrett Bradbury, his deal is very much team-friendly. You can cut him after next year with zero penalty. And with Andrew Voorhees tearing his ACL at the Combine, we're talking about him along with Joe Tipman. In 2024, you have massively upgraded your interior offensive line at left guard and at center. And at right guard, if Ed Ingram can take a big step forward in his progression, two stud offensive tackles, the future is bright. 
and at pick 211 trey tucker wide receiver from cincinnati so best player available mock draft brian branch siaka ika joe tipman henry toe toe andrew Voorhees, and trey tucker comments time more fast food hot takes and i hope i'm saying your name correctly here i'm gonna give it my best shot radovan panovich says Popeye's my dude, but just for the sandwich. Customer service is top notch and their sides. In regards to their sides, their red beans and rice is super dope. It's one of the best sides in the whole fast food industry. Their sandwich, I remember all the hype and all the fights that were happening. People were ready to die over that sandwich. It was, it was all right. We agree to disagree there. But red beans and rice, oh, hell yeah. Hybrid C99 says, Bojangles is greater than Chick-fil-A. I don't know if you've ever been to the Southeast, Randy, but Bojangles is bar none for fast food fried chicken. Bar none, I say. Well, I did grow up in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, and where I lived at, the nearest mall, Iverson Mall, in front of it was a Bojangles. By the way, Iverson Mall along with Forestville Mall in the same area, probably about 10, 15 miles apart, the best snickerdoodle cookie on the planet. And this is turning into the fat podcast, whatever. Bar none. No hyperbole here. Go and get yourself one. Bojangles, I don't remember their chicken. What I do remember from them was at breakfast time, especially going before church, I would get their blueberry biscuits with that icing over top. Oh my God. I just don't remember the chicken. Sorry. I wish I could. Lastly, Dion Nelson says, the Richardson comparison is crazy. Yeah, he's Burger King. A bunch of hype, even though the product isn't all that great. And my son, he sings the jingle all the time, so the marketing is clearly working. But if we're going to say that Anthony Richardson is worthy of being a top 5 to 10 pick in this upcoming draft off of potential alone, forget the athleticism and the combine measurements and just the wow factor and the explosive plays that he's maybe capable of doing, but not consistently right now anyway, just him being a quarterback. Well, the potential is there, his accuracy issues. When we bring in coaching, they can work with him on getting a better release or his footwork before he releases the football. He can be something great. Same thing could be said about Burger King. Oh my God, Burger King could be the greatest fast food joint of all time. If we bring in John Taffer and Gordon Ramsay and oh my God, they can just light the world on fire. Are we really gonna say that? There's just too much risk with that guy. I think the Burger King comparison is spot on. What comparison to fast food would you give Anthony Richardson on this fat podcast? Leave it on the comments section below. We're back at it tomorrow. We'll see you then.